Hey guys, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today we're doing a calibration effort on Betaflight and I put a, a little note in the thumbnail saying this is important because it is important and the reason it's important is because you can't be sure 100% that out of the box Betaflight's going to get your current and voltage calibration correct. Now so far it's been pretty good on voltage although not perfect and it's been eh, marginal at best on, on current. And obviously there's a couple of reasons that's important. Um, first off, you're, you're relying on voltage information. That's kind of the tell all voltage. When it comes to landing a quad or an airplane, if your battery's not putting out the volt you need to fly, the plane's going to land or the quad's going to land. So it's important to know that. And then from a current consumption standpoint, it's also good to know what's going on with your motors. So if you're out flying under goggles, and you're not right in front of your face, you know, it's kind of good to see what's going on with current consumption. And it'll give you a look into how you're treating your batteries too. It's a good, especially, especially in the quad space because quads can really hit the current pretty hard. So these are two calibrations that are fairly important to do. And um, I just gave you the reasons why, you know, it's important for you to be able to maintain flight and understand what's going on with your batteries. So in beta flight, there's a couple calculations we need to do. Uh, one, one calculation or one calibration is for voltage. And that's just to make sure that the volts that we see on our display are lined up correctly with the volts that we see in the real life on the battery. All right, that's one calibration. And then the second calibration is your current draw. And there's a little bit of a formula. Now, the formula is on the screen. And I'm going to share it with you, but don't worry if you don't, I mean, if you, if you're okay with this math, then fine, knock yourself out. It's not that hard. If you don't like it, I put a link in the description to download a little calculator I put together, just a little quick little thing, and you can put your values in and it'll calculate for you. So the formula is your new scale or your new number, the one you're going to plug in is equal to your old number times what your on-screen display milliamp hours consumed are divided by what your charger puts back in. So let me show you a couple of quick pictures on this and um, let's see. I thought I had it. Let me, uh, I, I lost my image. <laughs> Can you believe that? I lost my image here. I found it. I found it. <laughs> there it is. I have to resize this just a little bit though. Okay, so here's the image. Now, you guys will probably hear me from time to time during a flight say, hey, you know, I'll, I'll do things like call out my milliamp hour uh, value. I'll say my, my milliamp hours are whatever, you know, and I'll, I'll call it out. Let me resize this. So, uh -oh, what's going on here? Sorry about this. There, okay. So what you can see on this on this little snapshot is this is a this is a screenshot that I took after my last flight on the Tyro 119. And you can see on on the screen it says used milliamp hours 121. That's obviously wrong. Um I flew I flew the I flew the craft for about uh, 6 6 or 7 minutes. So it it couldn't be 121. And also look at the voltage, the minimum battery came out at 14.3. So that's obviously that's not correct, right? We have we have to adjust that. We have to make a change to that. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make the adjustments and I'm going to show you how to do that. So and it turns out that um I I blew up my uh my my little blackboard image. Can you believe that? I'm having a day of it. You guys are going to have to forgive me on this. I have, I've lost my image and I'll have to work on that later. But anyway, you can still see the things that are important to see and uh, we'll get the, we'll get the spreadsheet up next. So here we go. Um, here's the spreadsheet. I'm going to show this to you. This is the little calculator. So remember what I told you about the formula. Um, you want to take your, your on-screen display MAH divided by what your charger puts back in and multiply that by your old scale and that gives you your new number. Okay. So I'm going to show you what I did, did on my quad on my quad. I've got my quad right here and you saw that, that screenshot that I had with the milliamp hours being, what were they? 260 or something like that? 161. So you can see on the screen here, I've recharged this battery and that's why I left the battery connected to this quad. I wanted it. I wanted to leave it connected. So I knew for sure which, which battery, uh, it was that was on the quad. So when I got home and I charged again, I could get that value. That's the value we're interested in. And you can see that says 960. So 960 milliamp hours, that's the number that we need for our formula. So the charger MAH right here is 960. 
Okay, so that's the first value. We're gonna pop populate that. And then the other value that we need is, is the one that I pulled off that on-screen display and that's 121. So you can see on my on-screen display value, I already have 121. Now the next thing we need to do is get into beta flight. And in beta flight, we need the, where did beta flight go now? Man, I'm losing all my stuff here. There it is, there's beta flight. Okay, so in beta flight, there's a value in here, the old scale number. So the amperage meter, that, and by the way, to get there, when you plug in a beta flight, you go to this power and battery tab, and you're looking for the amperage. We're looking for this section down here for the amp meter. And you can see that um, for this scale right now, I've got 13034, okay? That's the current number. So 13034, I know that's wrong. That can't, that can't possibly be right. So what we're gonna do is go back to the calculator, and we're gonna take that number, 13034, and we're going to plug that into our, our spreadsheet, the little calculator, 13, 1, 3, 0, 3, 4. Okay. Now that gives us a new scale value. And this is the calculated number of 1643. That's what we're going to put in beta flight. So I'll flip back over to beta flight and we'll pop that number in 1643. All right. Now, 1643. Now, the thing I want to tell you about that is that the... This process is iterative. Don't you shouldn't expect for it to happen and be done on one shot, right? It's it's you're going to have to do this more than one time. So uh, you'll likely need to do this more than once. And and I can tell you that on my Croc Baby, I probably did this process about three or four times uh, by the time it was zeroed in. And now that it's zeroed in on the Croc Baby, my milliamp hour consumption is right on the mark. So um, don't expect just to do it one time. You should plan on doing it more than once. All right. Let me check in on the comments real quick and see uh, see what's going on. Nothing, okay, nothing there. So Robert, Pete, how you guys doing? FL Engineer, uh, <laughs> uh, you're the only one here. Okay, you guys are having fun with the like button, good. Okay, so that's that's it on the, on the amperage calibration. That's all you need to do. Now on the voltage calibration, what we need to do next is pull out a voltmeter. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull out the voltmeter and show you that I've got that handy. And what we're gonna do is just take a volt reading so all, all you need to do on this, oh, you know what? Um, this will work. It's okay. So we're going we're gonna to take the volt reading, and I'm, I need to unplug my charger now because we don't need that anymore. The charger's saying 16.75. I don't know if you can see that, but we'll check with a voltmeter anyway just to make sure it's right. So 16.75 is what the charger says. Move that out of the way. Plug in our voltmeter. Okay, so 16.78, that's our number, all right? Now we're gonna, we're gonna add, we're gonna check that by going into calibration right here. Calibration, and why is this not giving me calibration? Oh, it wants to be plugged in, okay, gotcha. That makes sense. Okay. So measured voltage 16.75, we just pop that in here, 16.75. Now, I'm not gonna do measured amperage because unless you have the ability to measure current, you don't have the value, so just leave it alone. We're just gonna leave, put in the voltage number alone and hit calibrate. And you can see that once you hit a plot, oops, sorry guys, I didn't put it back on, on the big screen for you. Give me one second, there we go. I'll back out, I'll back out and let you see it. Okay, so on the, on the beta flight screen, you hit calibrate, and this box right here that says measured voltage, that's where we're gonna put in our 16.75. So 16.75, and on the amperage field, we're gonna leave that alone because unless you have the ability to measure current, you can't put that number in there, and we're using the math method instead. So I'm gonna hit calibrate, and you can see once I do that, it says, okay, the calibrated voltage scale is 110. Do you wanna apply it or not? I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply, and now what I'm looking for on this top bar is 16, I'm looking for 16.75 up here and I see 16.65. So in what you can do is you can either tweak it a little bit by hitting this multiplier value and then hitting save. So the idea is that, okay, well look, I hit multiplier and it went down to three point, that's no good. So let's put that back down to one. Let's try the divider value. I did have some notes on these, but I've never tried this before. I just know that they do help you further tweak your tweak your voltage values. No, nope, none of those are working out very well. 
So let's try upping the scale just a little bit. So 16.75 is the number I'm looking for. That's too much. We'll go down a little bit. And what, if you can see what I'm doing, I'm looking at this number at the top where Betaflight is reporting my voltage now at 17.37. I'm trying to get it closer to 16.75 and maybe 11. That's the number. There we go. 16.77, that's pretty close. So that's pretty pretty close to what my my meter is reading. So 16.75 on the voltage, and we've got a current calibration now. It says 8 amps, and to me that's disturbing because I really don't think it's 8 amps. I don't think it's 8 amps, but rather than change it, I'm going to go fly it. And once I go fly it, that'll give me an idea. I'll do the same thing again. I'll capture I'll capture a picture or I'll say to myself in my recording or, or, or write it down. Just you know, get a piece of paper and write it down and capture that, that information that you need about your, um, about your milliamp hours consumed. So just keep recapturing this number and make this an iterative process. So next time if I go fly and it pulls in say 600 milliamps and my charger says it put back seven, I'll go back to my spreadsheet my uh, my blackboard spreadsheet here and I'll pop in those values and let's see can I hide that there we go I'll pop in those values I had a lot going on here so I'll pop in these values on this spreadsheet and I'll recalculate and get a new scale number and I'll just plug that in and I'll keep refining that until I get closer and closer to zero so hopefully that helps hopefully you guys understand now that that in order to calibrate, it's not that hard. It's it's very it's a very simple process, and it's not something you want to you, you don't want to skip this. You, know, you you definitely want that current to be right, and you definitely want that voltage to be right. So don't skip the process. You can see that I mean we are 12 minutes in, and I've I've bumbled through <laughs> using Word and Excel and Betaflight in a in a live stream and explaining it while looking at different pictures and and it took us 12 minutes. Right. So if you're on your own and you just follow this process, you can get it done in just a few minutes. And it's totally worth it to make sure that what you're seeing on your screen is right. I can tell you right now, I'm looking at the, as I look at beta flight, um, let's see here at workspace, as I'm looking at beta flight, I can see the amperage fluttering down here at eight amps. I don't know if you guys can see my mouse or not, but I, it's fluttering down here at eight amps. I know that's wrong. There's no way this thing draws eight amps static. So, but that's okay. You know, I'm going to go fly it and, and we'll get there. So with that, that's it. That's how you calibrate it. And um, I highly recommend that you guys take advantage of that process and, and make sure you do it on your quads. So let me just check the comments. It looks like very small in terms of comments today. Thanks for the calculator. I'm lazy. I need someone to hold my hand. Well, FL engineer, no problem, man. Glad, glad I could help. John Larson, thanks for hitting the tip jar. Very nice of you. I appreciate you. Thanks for doing that. So that's it. Are there any questions? I, I, it's kind of a short video. If there are no questions, I think we're, we're where we need to be. Just don't be afraid to, don't be afraid to experiment. You know, don't be afraid to try it out. And, um, you know, we'll go, we'll go uh, make sure that our beta flight configuration for our quads for voltage and current is, is accurate. So don't be afraid to fool with it, um, especially if you make backups. Uh, might not be a bad idea to write your initial values down just in case. Um, but so far I've done this a couple of times now, haven't had any problems and, and I'm, I've been able to get my current and my voltage tuned in pretty well. All right, guys. Well, Hey, listen, I think that's it. I'm not seeing any questions, short video today. And, uh, you now know how to calibrate beta flight for voltage and amperage. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did do me a favor, hit that like button. That's always helpful. And if you're not a subscriber to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. So, you know, when new material hits the channel. All right, that's all I've got for today. Take it easy.